Expression trees are a way to turn code into data, allowing you to dynamically create, modify, and execute logic at runtime. In game development, this means building systems that can adapt to the needs of your game on the fly. In this video, you'll learn how to use expression trees in Unity to dynamically access properties, invoke methods, and calculate damage without having to hard code references. Then we'll move on to logical expressions and finish by creating a state machine at runtime. If you're looking for ways to write smarter, more adaptable code, stick around. Expression trees might just change how you approach problem solving in Unity. So let's start with an example that's really easy to understand. We're going to create a script that will allow us to dynamically access properties of an object using expression trees. The first thing I'm going to do is add a using statement for system.link.expressions. I'm actually going to create two classes here. The first one will just be a mono behavior that we can put on a game object in Unity. I'll just call it expression tree demo. The other one is going to be something that represents data about the player. So I'll call it player. And for now, let's just put one property on it, which I'll call health. Now, back up in our mono behavior class, we're going to create a method that will generate a compiled function that will retrieve the value of a specified property by name. This is a generic method that will create a delegate to access a property of an object dynamically. First, I'm going to create a parameter expression that will represent the input object of type T. In our example here, it will be the player object, but it could be any type T. Now you can give expression parameters any name you want. Here I'm just going to use x. So in the lambda expression that we're building, x will represent the player object. Next, I need to access the property on the object using the provided property name. Then we'll create a lambda expression that represents a function mapping the input object to its property value. Finally, we'll compile the lambda expression into an executable delegate and we'll return it. Now, just for a moment, I'll change to using explicit definitions here, just so we can see that there are different types of expressions being returned from these different methods. So the parameter method returns a parameter expression, and the property method returns a member expression to return a member of that class. Finally, our expression lambda creates a generic expression where the type is actually the return type of this method. So essentially, we've created a dynamically generated getter method for the property. If you're new to expressions, this will make a lot more sense as soon as we put it into practice. Let's create a start method. So here in the start method, why don't we just create a new player object, maybe with a health of some number, so let's say 100. Then we can create a delegate to dynamically access the health property of the player class. And then for now, we could just log that out to the console. Now, I know right away, some of you are already thinking, well, you have a reference to the player and it has a public health property, so why do you need this dynamic method? Well, sometimes it is convenient just to hard code a reference to that property. But what if the property you want to access isn't known at compile time? Maybe you want to get information about a specific stat. You could create a method where you would pass in the stat name, and maybe you have to do something like if stat name is health, return player.health, or else if speed, and so on, right? You might have a dozen of these. So this is going to start to get tedious, especially if you have a system where properties are being dynamically selected at runtime. Well, instead of a big series of if else statements trying to access every single property on the player object, you can just have one method. You pass in a name, it will find the property and return it. So in a nutshell, that's really what an expression tree is. We've just built a bunch of expressions together into a compiled function. Before we move on to a more complicated example, let's go back to Unity and make sure we see something in the console. I'll just quickly hit play here. We should see output that the player's health is 100. And of course, that's exactly what happens. So next, what we'll do is have a look at how we can get methods instead of properties. Let's jump back to code. To make this simple, I'm just going to come back to the player class that we made earlier, and I'm going to add a new method here. I'll just call it take damage. We'll make use of this in a new example. In our new class here, we're going to create a method to dynamically generate a compiled delegate that will invoke a method by its name at runtime. First, we're going to create a parameter that will represent the instance of the object, type T, on which this method will be invoked. Then we'll create a parameter to represent the argument passed to the method. We'll just type it as object to make this as flexible as possible. Now we can retrieve the method info for the specified method name on type T. If it's not found, why don't we throw an exception with some kind of error message? Finally, we can create an expression that will call the method on the instance and cast the argument to the appropriate parameter type. 
Here, expression.call is the core of dynamic method invocation. It defines the action, and expression.convert is needed to ensure that the types of arguments match the method's params. When we're all done with that, we'll create a Lambda expression that represents the method invocation, and we'll compile it into an executable delegate. Now let's see how this works. Let's create a start method. Let's use our method to define a new delegate that'll dynamically invoke the take damage method on any player. So for example, we could create a new player here and we could call that action on that player and just pass in some value. Now, some of you are probably saying, yeah, but that's a public method on the player object and we have a reference to the player, just like the previous example, right? Well, what if you don't know what method you wanna call? So for example, maybe the enemy has a method get behavior based on distance. So this class has no idea what that method is gonna be and it doesn't need to know because we have a method invoker. As long as we know what the name of the method is, that's enough. We don't need to hard code a reference to it. Now, I'm just making up something for an example. There isn't really a get behavior based on distance method on the enemy class, at least not yet. So I'm gonna remove that. Let's go back to Unity and make sure that our method is actually invoked. I'm just going to drag this script onto my example game object and hit play. And now we should see two things come out into the console. The first is our original example, of course. And now we're also taking 25 damage. So dynamically invoking methods isn't really that much more complicated than getting references to properties. Let's look at another kind of expression. In many games, damage calculation formulas may need to change or be configured at runtime based on game mechanics, player stats, and so on. Using expression trees, you can generate and modify these formulas dynamically without having to hard code them ahead of time. So let's start by defining a method that will create and compile a delegate to calculate damage dynamically. Let's keep this one really simple. We'll just take in two params of type int, multiply them together, and return us the result. Let's define a parameter expression for the base damage input. This will be the first argument of the function we're creating. Then we'll define a parameter expression for the multiplier input, which will be the second argument to the function. Then let's define the body of the expression. So this will multiply base damage and multiplier. And then we'll create a Lambda expression for a function that'll take in a base damage and multiplier, multiply them together and return us the value. We'll just compile that and return it. Now, of course, this is a dead simple example. We could change the func that's being returned. We could also change the signature of the create damage evaluator so that we could accept some other data into this method and create a much more complex calculator. But for now, let's create a start method and see this in action. Let's call our method to create a dynamic damage evaluator. Then we'll use that compiled delegate to calculate damage with inputs of base damage 10, multiplier two. Then let's just log this out to the console. Let's go try it out. So once again, I'll drag the script onto my example game object, press play, and now we should see three outputs in the console with the most recent one being a damage calculation of 10 multiplied by two, and there it is. So mathematical expressions, no problem. Let's go look at some logical operators. NPC behaviors can often depend on runtime conditions like player health, proximity, or game state. Hard coding these behaviors can quickly become unmanageable in complex games. So let's look at a really simple example before we actually look at how we would make a dynamic state machine. So let's define a parameter for the player's health input. Then we'll create a condition, health less than 30. If it's true, I wanna to evaluate to a constant string of high, but if it's false, we'll use a constant of low. Now we can combine the condition and these results into a conditional expression. That's essentially doing what a ternary operator would do. Now let's create a Lambda expression with the condition and compile it into a delegate. If we come back up to the top, let's create a start method. We'll create a delegate that evaluates the aggression level based on the player's health. Now let's define the player's health as just an integer of 50. Then we can use the delegate to calculate the aggression level based on the player's health. Let's output that to the console and go try it out. Let's just get that script on there and hit play. Should be no surprises here. We should see low, aggression level low. Yeah, so that's perfect. Let's move on to something slightly more advanced, creating a state machine at runtime. To save a little bit of time, I've made a hero script here that has two properties, health and distance, and it's gonna get a reference to the enemy and be able to calculate its distance from the enemy. It also has a little method here so that if I hit the space button, its health will drop. Likewise, I've made an enemy script that keeps track of its aggression level and has three public methods, attack, taunt, and patrol. You can see patrol does nothing to the aggression level, but taunt increases it by five and attacking increases it by 10. So we'll just track that number to see how the enemy's state machine is reacting to the player's proximity. So the enemy state machine class will be a little bit bigger, but not by much and nothing new. 
Let's start by having a method that will dynamically create an expression to invoke a specific method. So for example, attack, taunt, or patrol on the enemy class. First, let's define a parameter for the enemy object in this tree. Then we can define a parameter for the hero object as well. Then we're going to find the method on the enemy class with the given name that takes a single hero argument. Then we can create a method call expression to represent calling the method on the enemy object. Finally, let's create a Lambda expression that wraps the method call and returns it. We'll be able to use these Lambda expressions in our state machine. Now, up at the top here, I'm going to define a delegate that will represent the current enemy behavior. And let's go ahead and start building this state machine. So I'll create a new method here. We want our compiled delegate to take in an enemy and a hero and return us the action of type enemy hero that will store in that behavior. So first, let's define a parameter for the enemy object in this expression tree. And we'll do the same for the hero. This is not unlike what we did in the other method. Then we're going to need a few conditions. Let's create a condition to check if the player's health is less than 30. And let's create another condition to check if the hero is within 10 units of the enemy. Now I'm going to log these two conditions just so we can see them. You can actually log any expression you want for the purpose of debugging. Logwin is a cheap tool from the asset store that lets you track values without flooding the editor console. I'll put a link to it in the description. Next, let's use the other helper method to actually compile delegate expressions for the enemy's attack, taunt, and patrol methods. And now we're going to start creating conditional expressions. And this is where you can really start to build up trees of expressions. So first, we're going to choose taunt if the hero is near, otherwise patrol. Now let's make another one that says we'll choose attack if the player has low health. Otherwise, we'll evaluate the taunt or patrol one that we just made. So in this tree, attack will be evaluated first. If that's not true, it'll evaluate the other combined expression. So now we've got a simple little tree. Let's create a Lambda expression for the full state machine, taking the enemy and hero as inputs. Then we can compile the expression tree into an executable delegate and return it. If we come back up to the start here, let's make references for our enemy and also for our hero. That way, in the start method, let's just use the most naive way possible of getting references to both the enemy and the hero. In our update method, we can dynamically evaluate the current state and determine the appropriate behavior. So let's assign the behavior delegate based on the current state, which right now is just the enemy and the hero. Now we know what the state machine wants to do. We can execute the current behavior if we like by calling behavior and passing in the arguments it expects. Finally, I'm going to send something out to Logwin again so we can see that when we press play. Just one more thing while I'm thinking about it. We don't really need to create a new state evaluator every single update. Instead, how about we create it one time in the start method and I'll just cache a reference to it actually just by creating a new field up here at the top. Now let's go try it out. We'll just move our hero around and see what happens. So right now I've moved the hero quite far away from the enemy, so he's not going to trigger any behavior at all at the moment. I've already added the enemy state machine script to the enemy, so let's hit play. Right away you can see the enemy is in a patrolling state. It just keeps outputting that to the console. If we look over in the log win window, you can see the enemy aggression level is zero. You can also see the two binary expressions that I output there. Now, a neat feature about Logwin is you can hit the current button here and you can start going back and forth between frames. So if you had a state machine or any sort of properties you wanted to output here, you can actually go back in time and see what values they were in the previous frames going back all the way to the start. So I'll just manually drag the hero within range here and you can immediately see the enemy has switched to a taunting behavior. And if we look over in the other window, you can see the enemy aggression level is going up by five every frame. Now we have one other state and that is if my health drops below 30, the enemy should try to attack me. So if I just click on the game window here and hit space a couple times, you can see down in my log win tab, the hero's health is going down. And now as soon as it hits 20 there, the enemy has switched into an attack state. Now, even though we've only just begun to scratch the surface of expression trees, I hope that this video will start to spark some ideas on how you can solve some of the more complex problems that you face in a very dynamic way. And I think that we'll be using expression trees in more advanced topic videos going forward because they're so powerful and useful for all kinds of systems that you build for your games. 
One gotcha with expression trees is that they don't play well with iOS or WebGL. However, there's a very cheap tool that you can buy from the Unity Asset Store that will overcome that limitation, and I'll have a link to that as well in the description. So this is where we'll wrap it up. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to come join us on Discord. Like and subscribe. New videos every Sunday. Any questions or comments, please add them below. I'll throw another video up on the screen, and maybe I'll see you there.